Hi, I'm Stephen Ornadell, and I'm the Senior Vice President of Roaming and Security Solutions at Mobilium. But more importantly, I'm also the Chairman of the Global Title Leasing Task Force within the GSM Association. So GT leasing, it relates to global titles and the leasing of them. Now a global title is really, it's like a phone number, but instead of being a phone number of a phone, it's like a number of a network element, a node, and it's an address used for communication. Now, mobile operators use those GTs, these global titles, day-to-day -day throughout their life to enable international roaming and other services to work. Now, what's happened is they've actually leased access to some of their own GTs, some of their own global titles, to third parties. And that means control over the activities that takes place using those global titles is now passed to a third party. So the issue and challenge of global title leasing is really that when two operators sign an agreement to launch roaming, it's between two trusted parties, party A and party B. And they assume they know each other and they trust each other. One of those parties may not have realized that the other party is then giving access to a third party into that connectivity. And the problem is the connectivity enabled through global titles is right into the core of the network, even into the subscriber registry, the database of all subscribers. And nobody would ever dream of giving access like that to sensitive information to a totally third party. Could you imagine turning up to SWIFT, you know, the Global Clearing Banking Association, saying, can I pay $1,000 a month to access your network and to any bank in the world? Of course not. But somehow that's happened in our telecommunications ecosystem. The GSM Association has recognized that there's an issue. There's been an awful lot of focus on this and coverage. And we've recognized together that something needs to change. Now, in the past, there were no controls. There were no recommendations. There was no guidance on the subject of global title leasing. It just evolved over time. What we've published now is the first ever code of conduct that outlines appropriate behavior for all players in this ecosystem. And it raises the bar and really introduces new standards, new recommendations of best practice. So going forward, there will be no excuse for anybody not to adhere to best practice and to enable really bad and dangerous behavior. There will be many players involved in this ecosystem that need to take action. And two of them, are indeed the GT lessors, those that, those that lease the global titles, and transit carriers, those that facilitate the actual interconnectivity of traffic. And they need to take action. Now, the very first thing they need to do is read the global title leasing code of conduct and understand it. And then in terms of practical steps, by the end of this year, they absolutely need to withdraw any support for routing via lessee only. Now that's explained in the code of conduct and that is a really dangerous and pernicious way of routing traffic. So they must do that. In addition, they need to conduct the due diligence on any new party entering their network that's leasing a, code, a global title, but also they need to conduct a due diligence on anyone already a customer. They are absolutely the very basic steps that they need to do. Right, so there may be an assumption that any operator that's not involved in GT leasing doesn't have to do anything. Nothing could be further than the truth. In fact, what we want those operators to do is to stand up, be counted, and declare their support of the code of conduct. And by doing that, that makes it a much more important and relevant document. Now, we are actually proposing changes into the new roaming contracts of 5G standalone roaming that require compliance with this code of conduct. So we want operators to publicly endorse this code of conduct and then to introduce those clauses into their new roaming contracts, to look at maybe their old contracts as well, because we will be preparing a suite of changes for those. And then really important, you know, supervising traffic coming into their network, looking at where it's coming from. If it's coming from a GT less or checking, did they sign up to the code of conduct? If they did, approaching them and challenging them for this bad behavior that is not allowed under the new code of conduct. And if they haven't, speaking to them and asking them, why haven't you signed the code of conduct? We've publicly supported it. You need to implement the recommendations of it right now or we will remove connectivity from you. You know, there's options, but that's what I definitely would be recommending.